And Father, through your word and through song, thank you for reminding us that we don't have to be a slave to anything because we are your children. In Jesus' name we pray. And everyone said, Amen. Amen. Grace and peace to you from God our Father and our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. Joshua chapter 24. He's about ready to check out. He's led the Israelites along. He succeeded Moses. And he's just putting it on the line with the children of Israel. And he says, Choose this day whom you are going to serve. But as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. And that's really what we want to do, isn't it? Each and every day, we want to serve the Lord. And you know, every time we come to worship, it really is a prayer, praise, and healing service. Amen? Amen. And not just for the people that we're praying for, but how about for us? You know, we need God's healing. We need His grace. We need His encouragement. We need His inspiration. And we need that healing grace, that healing rain uh, each and every day. And we get it through God's Word and we get it through the sacraments. We remember God's baptized children. We get the healing grace of God and, and Holy Communion. And we get pointed to the truths of Jesus Christ. There was a, uh, a video that I watched this past week of a, of a guy who was telling the story of uh, a, a friend who told him this story that he had gone to a funeral recently. And after the funeral, they decided, some of them, to go to a, a local bar and grill and just, you know, visit and have some fun and talk about the deceased. And as they were doing that and visiting with one another, uh, the, the bartender uh, said, um, you know, as, he, as they were talking about like faith and Christ and churches and community, hey, I, I think I need to be baptized. And, you know, they all kind of looked at her and said, well, why do you think you need to be baptized? And she said, well, because I've been reading the Bible. And one of them asked, and I like the questions that were asked, well, why have you been reading the Bible? You could say, hey, that's great. Glad you're reading the Bible. Why have you been reading the Bible? Well, she said, because I'm just tired of all the lies. Isn't that interesting? How many of you guys are just tired, you know, of all the lies and all the stuff that we're hearing day in and day out? I'm telling you that more than any other time, we just need to be, we just need to be standing on the truth of God's word. Amen? Because God, we got everybody just cramming into our ears, you know, wanting our attention, wanting us to listen to their agenda, wanting us to listen to their platform, and I'm kind of sick and tired of it. I mean, the only God that I want to bow down to is the one true God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And I want to seek His truth. And like Isaiah said, I want to worship the chosen one, the one in whom God the Father delights, and no one else. Because I don't want to bow down to the idol of tolerance. I don't want to bow down to the, the God of just getting along. I don't want to bow down to the God of acceptance and the God of political correctness. I don't want to bow down to the God of woke or to any other political party. The only God that I want to bow down to and worship and believe in and be inspired by and be guided by is the only one true God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Because i got to tell you guys, there's just a lot of lies and false teachings out there. Not just in secular agendas, but in religious ones as well. I mean, I've got this book in my office, you know, it's called The Dictionary of Cults, Sex, Religions, and the Occult. 1993 is the honor of been publishing house. I mean, this thing is old, but it basically says that there are thousands of religions. And this book, you know, can't cover them all. Um, but, I mean, there's so many of them, I couldn't believe it. I was just flipping through it. How about Satanism, the church of Satan, true or false? False. How about uh, um, Mormonism, true or false? False. How about, well, Judaism, as far as believing in Jesus, true or false? They don't, so we don't want to be Jewish people just believing in the Old Testament, not in the New Testament. Um, how about uh, Christian scientists, true or false? How about, let me see what else I can flip to. Buddhism, true or false? I think we got to just 
stand up. And like the Bible says, speak the truth. Because what we're talking about today is truth. To speak the truth in love. And sorry if I've done this before, but there's all kinds of books out there. There's all kinds of religions, re religious gurus claiming to have, you know, the truth, the one way to God. And we could, we could bow down to the God of Allah and we could read the Quran and, and believe that Muhammad is the prophet. True or false? We could bow down to the, you know, the God of Mormonism and, and follow the Book of Mormon and say, this is the, this is the true word of God. This is the inerrant and inspired word of God. And believe in multiple gods. True or false? How about the New World Translations of the Scriptures, better known as Kingdom Jehovah Witnesses? You know, they're Kingdom Halls. Do we really want to put our head in this book and be guided by it? True or false? Yeah. What we can't do, folks, is be censored. We have to speak up. And we have to speak the truth in love. So why don't we just do this? Why don't we just push the pause button, you know, and, and focus on ourselves a little bit, okay? It says in 1 John chapter 1, verse 8 and 9, if we say we have no sin, we deceive, that is, we lie to ourselves, and the, and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, He is faithful and just, and will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness, amen? So the truth is, we're all broken. The truth is, we're all messed up. The truth is, we're all full of it. We're all full of sin. And the truth is that we need somebody to deliver us. We need somebody to rescue us. We need somebody to save us. And we need somebody to forgive us and love us and care for us and keep us and bless us each and every day. And the God of the Bible, the one true God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit does that. And we got to speak up and we got to tell the people about the truth. And the way we tell people about the truth is to be sanctified in the truth ourselves. In fact, that's what Jesus said in John chapter 17. It was the high priestly prayer. And he was calling out to God, praying for the believers, praying for the people in the world who didn't believe. And he said, Father, sanctify them with your truth. Your word is truth. So if you want to get sanctified, if you want to be made holy in Christ, if you want to be led by the Holy Spirit, you need to go to the place where you can get that. And where you get that is in God's Word in sacrament. You want to be made holy? You want to be made sac sanctified? You want a closer walk with God? Then get into the Word. Remember the sacraments. Come to the Lord's Supper because that's where you get sanctified. That's where you get strengthened. That's where you get courage and that's where you get boldness to share the truth with other people. And that's what we're supposed to be doing as Christians. That's what we're supposed to be doing as a church. The Bible has a lot to say about truth. In fact, very often when Jesus was talking with people, he would say, verily, verily, I say to you, I tell you the truth. Because there is only one truth. There is such a thing as absolute truth. There are multiple truths. There's only one truth. And I don't know about you, but I like it when somebody tells me the truth. Like to be deceived, like to be lied to, like people exaggerating in your face and telling you wrong things. No, just tell me the truth, whether I like it or not. Just tell me what the facts are. You know, I'm thinking of Martin Luther King Jr. Day and I'm thinking about the big parade that's going to go right down 4th Street. You know, I'll be able to go to my balcony and just watch it. In fact, this is kind of crazy that the largest MLK Day parade takes place in San Antonio, my hometown. Now, isn't that interesting? In a town that's 65% Hispanic. You know, it doesn't have really a large black community, you know, it, you know, so 65% Hispanic and that's the largest gathering. And so I'm not opposed to MLK. In fact, he was a person that spoke the truth in love. The dude wasn't going to be censored. He spoke out because he believed that the God of the Bible, the same God that we believe in, the one true God. Now he wasn't a perfect person. He believed that God was opposed to racism. He would believe that God was opposed to oppression. He believed that 
that the God of the Bible did not show favoritism as Peter, a Gentile, confessed about finally spreading the good news of Jesus to the Jewish people when Peter said, I now realize how true it is that God does not show favoritism, but accepts men or people from every nation who fear him and do what is right. And the guy had kahunas. He had courage. You think of all the impression, all the oppression, the difficulty, the verbal abuse, and the crap that he took. And then, because he spoke out, because he tried to speak the truth in, in, in loving ways and in peaceful ways and not in violent ways, somebody took him out violently. MLK. And I like the fact that he wanted liberty and justice for all, because I believe that God made all all creatures, that everybody that I looks like is created and made in the image of God. Amen? It doesn't matter where you were born, what country, what part of the globe you're from. Jesus came for everybody. And then I'm reminded of Martin Luther, the 16th century former. And some of you know that Martin Luther King Jr. was named after Martin Luther. Did you know that? Obviously, Martin Luther King Jr.'s father admired and was inspired by Martin Luther and what he stood for. You talk about not being censored. You talk about speaking the truth and love in the 16th century in the 1500s when the Catholic Church ruled everything. I mean both church and state. And here comes this guy saying, I think you got it wrong. I think you're leading people astray. In fact, I think you're downright lying to them. You're not telling them the truth and you're doing it for your own gain and you're doing it for your own profit. Shame on you. And we know that he tried to convince the church that he loved and grew up in and was a part of to get back to the basics of the Bible. That if you have faith in Jesus, that you believe that he died for your sins and rose again, you are in. And they'd have nothing to do with it. But he wasn't going to be censored. In fact, it almost cost him his life. The governor of his day, the, the L governor Lombardo, now that we have a new governor, kidnapped him. Duke Saxony, Duke Frederick of Saxony, northern Germany, and put him up in a big castle, you know, one of those huge castles in northern Germany, kidnapped him so that he wouldn't be killed. Because back then, if you received the bull, if you were excommunicated from the Roman Catholic Church in the 16th century, somebody could take your life out, take your life out, and it was like, thanks for doing that for us. Well, he decided he had a lot of time on his hands. So what did he decide to do? Write the Bible in German. So he took the Old Testament Hebrew scriptures and he wrote it in German. Then later on, he translated the New Testament, or maybe I have it the other way around. Anyway, he translated the entire Bible eventually into the German language so that people could read the Bible for themselves. What a fantastic idea. Hallelujah. Amen. And you can do the same thing. You can read the B.I.B. all your own. You can read your one, your Bible. You can have a, an app delivered to your phone. You can have Bible verses delivered to your phone. What you want to do is say, stay sanctified in the truth of God. And I like that encounter, you know, speaking of truth, Jesus, you know, he, he's, he's being terrorized by Pilate. And Pilate said to him in John chapter 18, so you are a king. And Jesus answered, you say correctly that I am a king. For this I have been born and for this I have come into the world to testify to the truth. Everyone who is of the truth hears my voice. And Pilate said to him these classic three words, what is truth? And I mean, people are still struggling with that today. What is true about the world, about humanity, about the church, about everything that's going on in the world? What's the truth about sickness and suffering and cancer and grief? And pain. I mean, who has the truth? And we have an answer for them, don't we? It's John chapter 14, verse 6. Neither Jesus, either he was telling the truth, or he was a lunatic and a liar. 
But by God's grace, through faith in Jesus, and it's all the work of the Holy Spirit, we believe what Jesus said in John chapter 14, verse 6, when He said, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through Me. Like Joshua said, as for me and my house, say it with me, we will serve the Lord. God bless you as you do. Amen.